Picking up from where we left off, we shall now understand a bit of what the great William Shakespeare's plays are all about. Okay, let me ask you something. Do you remember the famous film Magbul, which had Irfan Khan and Tabu in lead roles? That, for example, is what a modern adaptation of Shakespeare's Macbeth looks like. Shakespeare wrote a lot about kings and conquerors, and for good reason. The Elizabethan age, when he was writing, was still a feudal era, and at that time, aristocracy was holding the sway. The business of kings and courtiers were of tremendous interest to the common people, and the murderous politics of rulers and conspirators held great appeal amongst the masses. You know what? Shakespeare actually took advantage of this and wrote a ton of historical plays, amongst which Roman histories form a separate category. These plays are about Roman historical events, legendary characters, plots and conspiracies, and general mayhem and bloodshed. Can you recollect any three plays based on such plots? Let me help you with that. There are three such plays, Coriolanus, Julius Caesar, Antony and Cleopatra. These plays are grouped as tragedies, and Julius Caesar stands out due to its character development and the struggles that its antagonist, Brutus, undergoes before and after Caesar's murder. Yes, let me tell you, Caesar gets murdered. So, who is the story all about? Did you know that Julius Caesar was so famous that a month of July was named after him? He even started a new calendric system called the Julian calendar. That's interesting, isn't it? In a couple of sentences, the plot revolves around the famous Roman general Julius Caesar, whose growing power and influence over the Roman Senate was feared by his friends and foes alike. After he defeats the sons of Pompey in battles and returns amidst much popular cheer, rebellious senators led by Cassius Longinus kill him so that he cannot become an emperor. To mask their true intentions, the killers appealed to Marcus Brutus, a great friend of Caesar, and made him join their ranks on the excuse that they were doing it for the greater good of Rome, so that Caesar did not become an authoritarian dictator. Our present scene, Act 2, Scene 2, is a very interesting one as it places the story in context of ancient Roman beliefs, culture and politics. On the one hand, we see Caesar's wife, Calpurnia, pleading with him not to leave home since she had an ominous nightmare about his murder. On the other, Caesar himself, driven by his lust for the crown and lulled with false hopes by a cunning, dacious Brutus, goes willingly to his death. Take note, students, since the language is quite archaic and understanding Shakespeare has a lot to do with understanding the language he writes in, it is full of metaphors and similes, big words and phrases, which are no longer used in plain English.